In 1800, Paddington was simply a large village sitting on the Edgware Road to the west of London. It was a rural settlement, situated around a green called Paddington Green. On this map by Horwood, you can see the Edgware Road running diagonally across the scene. The Harrow Road runs west from a junction with the Edgware Road and the New Road runs east. As London's canal system was planned, Paddington's convenient location was spotted. It was connected to London and the area to the south of the village was still fields. The Paddington arm of the Grand Union Canal was opened in 1801, with Paddington being chosen as the site of the basin because of its position near to the new road, London's first bypass. The new road is now known as Marylebone Road and Euston Road, and led to the east, providing for onward transport to the city. In its heyday, Paddington Basin was a major shipment facility and a hive of activity, as can be seen on this 1829 map. As the 19th century wore on, road congestion in London was reaching a crisis point. The 1846 Royal Commission on Metropolitan Railway Termini banned construction of new lines or stations in the built-up central area of London. The concept of an underground railway linking the city with the main line termini was first proposed in the 1830s. Charles Pearson, solicitor to the city and a social reformer, was a leading promoter of several schemes. In 1846 he proposed a central railway station to be used by multiple railway companies. The scheme was rejected by the Commission. A wide range of solutions were proposed, but all were rejected by Parliament. The radical solution of an underground railway eventually proved to be politically acceptable, thanks to the dedication of Pearson. A route was agreed between Paddington Station via Euston and King's Cross mainline stations to Farringdon. After successful lobbying, the company secured parliamentary approval under the name of the North Metropolitan Railway in mid-1853. Once again, the new road became important to this story. The Euston and Marylebone roads would be dug up, then the railway would be laid and covered over, restoring the road. This cut-and-cover system, along just one continuous road, covered the entire route between Edgware Road Station and King's Cross. The route at the western end was designed to follow the canal basin and then emerge into Paddington Station itself. This part of the plan meant that great western railway engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel put money into the project. The company's name changed again to the Metropolitan Railway, and construction began in 1861. The Metropolitan Railway opened on the 10th of January 1863, and was an immediate success, though its construction took nearly two years, and caused huge disruption in the streets. In this video I'm going to walk the first section of the world's first underground railway from Paddington Station. I'll take in Paddington Basin, emerge onto Prade Street, and arrive at Edgware Road Station. gone out that's taken me through the Parade Street exit because I have a memory that the factories were there once. I think they were always here as well. And this, certainly this uh, exit up to Bishop's Bridge Road has been in place forever.
still following the way outside into the Grand Union Canal. This is all a new section of Paddington Station. I think it really arrived with the Elizabeth Line Works. So you see Hammersmith and City Line platforms were always a bit of a grimy experience. Okay, now I see how they're going to get us to Granny and the Canal because they're taking us under the taxi ramp onto the other side where the canal is. That makes a bit of sense. This is uh, a great wall, uh, which is all kids uh, paintings of um, after the COVID pandemic, thanking the NHS for their work. Explains it. If I'm not mistaken, we'll be able to go out under the taxi ramp onto Canal. And then I've got to find a small bridge which would take us onto the northern bank. This is not the uh, only canal walk on the Hammersmith City, of which this video is part. We also did West Swan Park to Royal Oak along the same canal a bit earlier. But this is the um, new Paddington Basin development, which is a little, a little less, well, a little more. Modern. Lost for words. I'm going to go up that bridge there. That's a pedestrian glass bridge, which will get us onto the North Bank. I might, um, in the course of events, have to just cut out the sound that I just passed, um, and it played a bit of a U2 track, a cover version. And being that the YouTube algorithm now picks up everything, it's probably going to demonetize the video as a result. So that's why the sound may have gone uh, a bit weird back there. So I need to hang on left here. I'll take the left side of this. And then we'll get down to the canal side itself. I am aware, if I'd done this walk, say, 10 years ago, this would have been a totally different experience because this was a, a really grimy area. Much more fitting with the look of those buildings across the road, across the canal there. But now this opens out onto Paddington Station itself. And it's uh, a lot more up to date. I suppose I approve. I shouldn't have opinions on while I pass, but uh, this wasn't a very nice area before. And now it's uh, not an area where you feel if you have a camera on the side of the canal, you might get jumped by someone. Here, I think we're pretty okay. So this is the Paddington Basin. In an older theoretical Paddington to Edgware Road walk video. You wouldn't have seen canoe, canoes at the side of the uh, Paddington Basin. And here's a bit of history which I won't read out, which you can probably read it yourself. So we're coming to the end of the aforesaid basin, and then we can walk around where that grey building is. And there should be a little pathway up to Parade Street. It's quite extraordinary how the world has settled down into uh, an architect architectural style, which is generic. It's a lot worse, sorry, worse is pejorative. It's a lot more noticeable in housing, which are very, very similar now all over the world. 
Hey, who's this chap? We've now reached the end of the basin and through the gap just under the red building I can see the exit to Craig Street just saw a number seven bus go by. And it's apparently called Merchant Square, this area. And uh, it was developed in 2014. So brood old cast craft beer for the people. That's very generous of them. And I did a spy away out onto Prague Street. And we're going to be very near to the junction of Edgware Road here. So we're not anticipating the junction or anything, but um, I can see the sign for it. So this is where they wrote from Paddington, Parade Street, which was the original name for one of the original names of the underground stations, Paddington Parade Street, and it leads to the Edgware Road, at this point just here. And across the Edgware Road, um, we should find a station, indeed. There it is. being obeyed by most drivers where you are uh, should give way to pedestrians. So this is Chapel Street which appears on some uh, quite old maps. It was already in place before the area was properly developed. I assume it leads to the chapel. Okay, I'm going to arrive at this station and if you're following the trips on the Hamilton yeah. City lines or have followed the district line all the way to its terminus, which this is, well thanks for being with us. Dates from Metropolitan Railway. Mm. But uh, it's quite beautiful. Edgware House. 